Hey folks, welcome back to the Off-Grid Workshop. My name is Nigel, and in this video we are going to be building a DIY kind of uh, power bank, power supply, jackery type thing. Because uh, I, I need something for my truck, because I do a lot of mobile installs uh, for our company for Off-Grid. And also just often we'll do camping trips out of the truck with my kids and various things like that. But uh, a lot of the time I just find I need a a uh, 12 volt system to be able to charge tool batteries, various different things. And when I was looking at options, I looked at some of the Jackery options and what I found was that they are very expensive for not a lot of uh, power and storage. So for example, if you spend like 500 pounds on a Jackery, uh, you're getting a very small amount of uh, w uh, amp hour uh, battery capacity uh, compared to this one here is a 200 amp hour battery and it's probably going to be like eight or ten times the capacity of like a 500 pound jackery. So I've got a uh, a returned Victron 1200 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter, 200 amp hour battery, lithium battery. I'm going to be putting in a DC to DC, and uh, I'm going to be building it out into a really functional, nice box. So uh, I'll tally up the total price of everything once I'm done. But yeah, let's get after it and get building. This is what we're going to be building it with. So this is a 12 mil phenolic ply. So it's a sort of smooth coated uh, finish on the one side. And then on the other side has uh, this sort of honeycomb textured finish. It's fairly hard wearing. Um, this stuff does crack and chip if you drop stuff onto it. But uh, it's harder wearing than if you just had um, just straight ply. And the one advantage of this is it makes it a little bit more waterproof than that. Uh, this is obviously just a protective layer. So that's what we're building this out of. And there we have it. So the box, the initial box is done. So we've got a couple of handles. Uh, so the battery is going to go in basically in the middle here. Inverter on one side, DC to DC, and all of the inputs and outputs on the other side. Obviously with fuses and bus bars, etc. to keep it safe. We're going to cut a hole here for the inverter to ventilate properly and also to provide access for the switch and the same on the other side so it can draw air through. And then we will probably have, well, there will be a hole here on the other side, which will allow air to come up for the DC to DC to cool as well. Okay, making good progress. So we've got the three holes here for these things. So they are gonna go in like that into all of these. And then we have our plug socket, uh, which is gonna go in here and uh, when you're mounting these into something like this they're just super awkward because of how tight they are and the shape and stuff so we usually just actually land up and also the other thing is trying to cut around that in a wooden structure like this is a mission so we land up actually just cutting it so that it goes in nicely obviously you can see right through there so there's no way for you to screw it in and then what we do is we take one of these boxes which you'd normally mount like that and we put it behind over the top like that and we screw the the face of the plug into that and it also actually makes it safer because it closes all the wiring and stuff off at the back here and uh, so you don't have any 230 volt uh, exposed even though we're going to be putting a lid on here it just makes it safer all right getting everything mounted in here so dc to dc obviously this is on its side uh, 240 volt socket there, USB and cigarette lighters here, bus bars to tidy things up, and then going to put some fuses in here as well, inverters mounted on there, and then the battery is going to sit there in the middle. So getting there. So we're pretty much in. Got a strap in here, and some uh, little pieces of phenolic to stop the battery from moving around. Everything else is wired in. It's just not tightened in. Got fuses in. Just need to create the loom to connect all of these. DC to DC is in and going to drop the battery in so we know the length for the 240 volt coming to the switch and then we'll connect that up. Folks, so here is where we're at. We've got two outputs on Anderson's. This is the input for the DC to DC. This is plumbed into the inverter and that all works. We've got a switch here, inverter on off with a little light and we've got a couple of cigarette lighters here, both working. I've tested them. And of course, our USB. 
So yeah, pretty pleased with how it all looks. Um, these are the wires for the inverter switch. Inverter wires come around to the battery and I've put two wires here. This, These two here go down to the bus bars via a fuse. Uh, these three are daisy chained also via their own fuse. The DC to DC comes in by, via its own fuse over here as well. And then obviously the line in the vehicle that will feed into here will have a fuse at the engine battery. So yeah, pretty pleased with how it's turned out. Just gotta put the lid on and uh, we're good to go. So we're now fitting it into my Land Cruiser. So I've got the positive on there going to a fuse. So obviously this will connect to that. I'm gonna sort this out and tidy it up, put in some conduit. We've chased the wire through the bulkhead. This in here, it's gonna go under a cover that's here. And then there's a channel here that there's some, some wires that run already all the way down the vehicle down here. In that channel all the way, and then it comes out here and take an earth off. Probably this tie down point should be fine for an earth. And then I'm gonna put them into some conduit and tidy stuff up here. Power station is in here, obviously considerably bigger than a Jackery, but considerably more power. So 1200 watt inverter and 200 amp hours of lithium battery storage. So it's a substantial system compared to what I would have got from a Jackery. And uh, I mean, if I was to get anywhere near this sort of capacity, I'd be paying a fortune for a Jackery. So pretty pleased with uh, how that all turned out and how it's looking. So I thought I'd jump in here quickly and just show some numbers just to show how good value it is to actually make your own equivalent of a Jackery. And I've called what I, what I made in my truck a Hackery. But I'm going to put the numbers up here so you can have a look at them. But before I do that, I will say, though, that the Jackeries are very impressive in terms of how well they're made, sort of the ergonomics of them, the user experience, all of that sort of stuff, how everything ties together, the fact that you can charge them from a cigarette lighter in your van or vehicle, and from solar, it's got a built-in MPPT, all that sort of stuff. It's a very impressive technology, and obviously that's what you're paying for, the convenience and, and sort of that nice feel, looks good, etc. But uh, the trouble that I found was that I needed something more substantial than just your standard sort of 500 pound jackery. When I started looking at what you actually got, sort of 500 pounds didn't buy you a lot um, in terms of battery storage. So you're talking about like maybe, maybe you could find something that would give you sort of 500 watt hours, but realistically you're talking about more like sort of 250 watt hours for the 500 pound mark. And so I've done a little comparison here that you can actually see what you get for your Hackery. So um, I compared two models of the Jackery. So the first one is the Jackery 1000, which is as close to the price mark of what I actually ended up paying for my Hackery. Um, so it's just over a thousand pounds. That gives you a thousand, just over a thousand watt hours and the capability of a thousand watts of inverter power. So the inverter power is actually quite impressive for such a small unit, um, but it's the watt hours that really falls over, because essentially if you're maxing out that inverter, you can run it for just less than an hour, really, which is not very lot, very much. If you try and use that thing to run like a compressor fridge or something like that, I reckon that thing's going to be done with in a day, basically. So you, it depends on what you're using it for, but for the requirements that I had, a thousand watt hours just wasn't quite enough and I needed more and obviously at a thousand pounds it's already quite a steep price to be paying for that. Uh, to kind of match the capacity that I landed up getting out of my Hackery, the 2000, Jackery 2000 Pro is about as close as I could get to that. So that gives you uh, around about the 2000 watt hour marks. Like I think it's like 2100 watt hours. And interestingly, it has a 2000 watt inverter, which is very impressive. I will say that. Uh, but at 2000 pounds for that, it is a steep price to pay. Like 2000 pounds can get you a pretty banging system if you were to buy something that you kind of build out or if you were to get somebody to build something for you I'm using like a, pro a proper lithium battery, etc. So let's compare that to the Hackery. So I landed up the power that I can get from the Hackery lands up being 2400 watt hours and 1200 watt inverter. So I put a Victron inverter in there, as you know. So the battery total cost to me was around 425 pounds. I bought grade B cells, so I think they're actually 200 amp hour uh, Ketel, or, or I can't remember which cells they are, but I think they're 200 amp hours, which works out at about 
uh, 2,400 watt hours, or two, around about two, just over 2,000 watt hours. The inverter obviously is a 1,200 watt inverter, so that's at a constant and at a, a normal temperature. Obviously, if it gets hot, it's going to reduce its capacity. Uh, you can peak a little bit more than that potentially. The inverter uh, out price is 345 for those. Then the ply for the phonetic ply, I worked out roughly 30 pounds because I probably use about half a sheet or maybe just less than that in there, about 50 or 60 pounds a sheet. And then miscellaneous for stuff like cables and switches and plugs and USBs and cigarette lighters and all those sort of things, probably around 50 pounds. So I'm guessing I spent, minus my time, probably around 850 pounds for a pretty substantial uh, system for my vehicle and granted it's fairly big and bulky compared to what a jackery is uh, but it's it is pretty good it has bluetooth i can get to the app it has the protection that i need in the battery it has uh, low temperature protection all that sort of stuff uh, and a good inverter so it charges at 30 amps so yeah i'm pretty pleased with the system and certainly it's considerably less than i would have paid if i'd bought a, ba a jackery outright and a lot of the stuff i had anyway the battery was a kind of a workshop test battery that i'd made a video about like two years ago so i had it anyway and i was using it often for installs mobile installs out of my truck and stuff anyway so that wasn't a direct cost like out of my pocket now that's already paid for and gone the inverter is i just took it from our stock so obviously i got that at cost so it didn't actually cost me 345 pounds but if i had paid for it that's what i would have paid for it so yeah pretty pleased with the setup considerably less than uh, if I had paid for a Jackery, obviously if I wanted to charge it with solar, either I need to put in a charge controller into there as well, or I need to get a solar panel that has a built-in charge controller or something. And I could use one of the uh, uh, Anderson outlets to charge with solar or something like that if I wanted to. And obviously I don't have a mains charger built into that thing as well, so I'd have to use that, which I already have as well. So obviously the user experience and the ergonomics and the design of all of this that is nowhere near Jackery, but the value for money is considerably better in terms of way better performance for a lot less money than you would pay for a Jackery. Uh, and one of the things that I like is that I can repair and change and upgrade and, and fix things. Uh, so one of the things immediately, having used it for a couple of days now since I made it and then now I'm recording this part of the video, one of the things immediately that I know is that I don't have enough ventilation in that box. So the next upgrade that I'm going to do over the next week is to put in some big computer fans. So I'm going to put two 80 millimeter computer fans that will suck air in from the outside and blow it circulated in the box essentially and that's mainly to cool the inverter down and the and the, the inverter and the dc to dc when they're running and i'm going to put it on a temperature switch so i think i will probably trigger it to come on at 35 degrees celsius and when the probe reads that uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I might tweak the temperature. If you have any suggestions on what a good temperature is for me to kick those fans and let me know. They're very low draw. So they, I think they only draw like one and a half watts, maybe. They're very, very low draw. 12 volt DC powered. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you'd hardly even notice them running, but I don't know if I want them running all the time. So maybe 30 degrees. I don't know. Need to figure that out. Basically, I want it at the point where when stuff starts heating up in the box, it turns them on and circulates the air, but not necessarily on a hot day that they just sit there running all the time. That's kind of the way I want to get to with it. So, yeah. So there we have it. Thanks for watching, folks. And I'm going to crack on. We've got a show this weekend, so lots going on. And then I'm away for business next week in this vehicle. So, yeah, busy, busy. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.